This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. We all know most executive level positions are not posted or advertised. So the big question is this, if those 100K plus jobs are not posted or advertised, how do you go about your job search in a way so you can find the right companies, connect with the right people, and land your next ideal opportunity as quickly as possible and without compromise? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Chris Kirkpatrick, and welcome to Executive Job Search Secrets. Hey, it's Chris Kirkpatrick, and welcome to the Executive Job Search Secrets podcast. Now, for this episode, I'm really excited. It's kind of going to kind of piggyback off the last episode uh, where I talked a lot about Simon Sinek because um, I was inspired once again, as I, I, you'll find listening to me, I get inspired listening to a lot of thought leaders in a lot of different spaces. And I, and I love being able to take content that was geared towards business leaders and really helping build the bridge of how to implement that information into the job search world, into your job search, because there's so many people so many executives, so many leaders that I see that know all this stuff. They have all the tools, all the mindset. Everything is right on par, right? Like it's perfectly aligned when it comes to running a business. Yet then when something happens and, and their career gets derailed or maybe gets you know, shifted to a different set of train tracks, they, they find themselves not knowing what to do. They find themselves in a reactive position. And now a lot of the things that they know they need to do for business, they're, they're, they, they're not applying all those things, uh, all those same uh, principles, let's say, in their job search. And so um, that is something that, that I think is really important. And that's one of, the, one of my passions that I'm here, I believe, to illuminate for people. Now, for this video, ultimately, you'll see the title is Love Your Work and the importance of loving your work. And I wanna keep this as brief as possible, even though it's really important, is that they've done so many studies about the importance of loving your job. You know, when you don't love your job, what happens scientifically, psychologically, is that we start to focus on the details and we isolate to just work on the nitty gritty parts of our, of our job. And then slowly animosity and disdain for our, for our work creeps in. And when that happens, and we isolate, and, and especially when we go into isolation, rates of heart disease, rates of cancer, diabetes, and other health issues, they go up very drastically, significantly. And so ultimately what that means is that by going to a job that we don't love, we're slowly killing ourselves. And once again, this is not my opinion, this is scientific fact. Now there's a joke in the industry that the, the highest, and it's kind of a serious, not laughing matter, but I'm gonna just tell it to you anyway, is that the highest rate of heart attacks is on Monday because people are having heart attacks going to work every day because they don't like what they do. They hate their jobs. And I don't know how much of a joke that really is because I think there's some scientific fact behind that. I just don't know the, the specific numbers to it. But I think you probably like, oh, that makes sense if you're listening to this. Yeah, I bet you that is the case. And, you know, so when you think about that in a bubble, um, for your own well-being, getting aligned with work that you love is extremely important. And, and you owe it to yourself. And the sad part about that is only about 13% of the people in this world is polled by Gallup. And they do this poll every four years. Only 13% of all workers love, identify as loving their work. So that means 87% of the people in this world don't love their work. And that's, to me, that's a sad statistic. And it tells me that people aren't living their life intentionally enough. And, and I don't want that to happen to you. And I look at this job search that you're probably going through right now is an opportunity for you to increase that level of intention and really, you know, do that Stephen Covey ha seven habits of highly effective people begin with the end of mind or reverse engineer the process to get to where you want to go. So that's that. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is, well, first of all, when you look at that first idea concept about we're killing ourselves slowly by going to a job that we don't love, that, that you owe that to yourself. Now, the second one's about our kids. And I have three kids. Um, they're younger. They're seven, five, and 10 months old at the time I'm recording this podcast. And, you know, bullying is a huge epidemic in this world. And, you know, I, I work a lot of hours. I'm not asking people to feel guilty for me or, or, or you know, feel bad for me or anything of that nature. Um, I do it to myself. Um, I love what I do. I, I literally can't stop. I'm a 
a bit of a workaholic, some would call, but I don't think of myself as a workaholic. I'm just very passionate about what I do. So I want to share a study with you uh, about um, something that really hit me pretty significantly. And that is when we work long hours, and, and I know for me, I work long hours and sometimes I'm not home at night and I'm not there to tuck my kids in for bed. I'm not there for dinner time. And, and it kills me every single night. I have a lot of guilt around that. I love what I do, but then there are elements and times that I feel guilty about not being present. Um, but this study actually showed that if you love what you do and you're not present, there's no quantifiable results that show that there's any long-term negative ramification on the upbringing and psychological state of your children. So that's a good thing, that's a positive thing. Now on the flip side of that study, it shows people that even work nine to five, 35 to 40 hours a week, if they hate their job, the level of percentage of their children that become bullies at school goes up drastically. So when you, in summary, when you go to work and you hate your job, what's happening is you're bringing that home with you. It's not just about you and your career and your income. It's about your marriage and it's about your wife and your relationship and your communication uh, or your husband. If, if you're a woman listening to this, um, uh, you know, if it, it's about your children and what they pick up from you and it's about the stress that ultimately comes along with life and that is feeding on other people in your household. And so I get, uh, listen, I'm not here judging at all, um, but I am here to bring information to the table that maybe you weren't thinking about before. And ultimately, I think what we're all looking for in life is fulfillment. We all wanna know that we have a bigger purpose and we're all, we all wanna drive towards that. Now, the way I look at it is this, the best way to be fulfilled is to help other people. You know, the Bible says, and I'm not here to push my views on anybody, but I just love this statement. And I think it will make sense uh, for the context of how I'm, uh, how I'm speaking about it. But the Bible says money is not the root of all evil, even though a lot of people think money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil, right? And so it's, it's the same thing with your career. You know, you can't seek success for success's sake. You can't chase the big paycheck just for the money. You can't do all this stuff. You know, that has to be a byproduct of loving what you do. I'm a big believer money follows value, right? And if you ultimately lead with value and try to go into every situation adding more value than you extract from it, the money will follow itself and, and your brand will be elevated accordingly. You hear me talk a lot about brand and all these different things. I'm not going there in this conversation, in this podcast that much, this episode, but, but ultimately your brand is ultimately just what people say about you when you're not there, right? I mean, that, that really is what your brand is. And by going out there and having that servant mindset and, and, and just adding more value into every uh, every relationship, every interaction that you have with people, and then you try to pull from it, that's what's going to help you create your brand. And ultimately that, more importantly, is going to be what fulfills you. We get more, more fulfillment in life by helping other people than we do helping ourselves or achieving uh, goals that are just for us. Because if it's just about the goal, then it never ends. And it's always going to be the next goal, the next rung on the ladder to climb and all this stuff. And so I would just encourage you that if you're going through this process, uh, you're looking for a job, you're in this space, this is an opportunity for you to really reset and think about what direction do you want to go? What's important to you? What's driving you? What's going to be fulfilling for you? And what's important for your family, the dynamics of your relationship with your spouse, your children? Uh, you know, what is the long term lasting legacy play? of making sure that you pick something that really fits the whole gamut, the whole puzzle of your life. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. I hope you go out there, you have a blessed inspirational day and I can't wait to see you on the next podcast. Are you tired of struggling with your job search? Are you having a hard time connecting with key decision makers or struggling with knowing how to communicate your brand more effectively? Or maybe there's something else holding you back. Either way, our team is here to help and would love to give you a free 30-minute consult to hear about what you're doing, what you're looking for, and give you some advice on how to get there more effectively. All you have to do is go to www.careernextagency.com. We'll talk to you soon.
Like what you just heard? Visit c-suiteradio.com. C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business.